this meeting to order to have an approval of the February 5th, 2024 minutes. All in favor? Public comment regarding agenda items. That one was easy. We don't have anybody here. Staff report. And we have the, let's see, one, two, three. We have four divisions uh, that come through since our last meeting. I did send these all out in your agenda packet. And there is one that I did want to point uh, your attention to. That's the Livingston Housing Authority uh, Division. That's the first one. It's out on Middle Lamp Highway. You might notice that those lots are pretty small. Those are one of very few lots out in the county that has access to city sewer. So they are allowed to be 10,000 square feet. So, uh, like I said, that's on Hillham Highway and uh, Monterey Highway, I think. Uh, but, yeah, but anyway, uh, so there's sewer right there, so that's why those lots are only 10,000 square feet. Um, the others, pretty straightforward, but um, the uh, Linda Dan Division has one lot out on Hillham Highway. Um, the, the Michael Murphy adjustment is adjusting the boundary line of two new lots on Decker Lane. Uh, and then the Donnie Phillips adjustment is adjusting the common boundary line of two parcels on Iris Lane. And so I uh, just want to see if anybody had questions about any of those. Oh, then thus concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. All right, I know we do have a budget committee meeting at 5.30, so we'll try to get through this. And this is just a little refresher uh, of legal aspects of planning commission conduct. There's Jim, we'll make sure to get him on the record. So there, there are four uh, acts or aspects that we're going to cover tonight. The first is the Tennessee Open Meetings Act. The second is conflict of interest. Third is ex parte contact. And fourth is due process that is afforded to each citizen. So I'll start with the Tennessee Public Meetings Act, which is known as the Sunshine Law. That is Tennessee Code Annotated 844-102. And it deals specifically with the conduct of public meetings in the state of Tennessee. The purpose of this law is to declare that the formation of public policy is public business and shall not be conducted in secret. Um, the ironic thing about this is that all of the policy making boards in the state of Tennessee are subject to the Sunshine Law, except for the body that created the law, General Assembly, is not subject to the Sunshine Law. Uh, but Planning Commission falls under that because we do, uh, we do create public policy with regards to the divisions of property under five acres. And so we are subject to the Sunshine Law. And so um, there are a few basic uh, arms of the Sunshine Law, and I'll just read them real quick. It says, all meetings of any governing body are, to, are, de are declared to be public meetings open to the public at, at all times, except as provided by the Tennessee Constitution, the General Assembly. Um, also, um, there is a little thing where if a if a body is meeting with their attorney to discuss a specific uh, litigation, then the meeting can be the meeting can be closed, and you can have that conference in private. However, you cannot discuss any other business other than that litigation with the attorney. As soon as you do that, you are in violation. You're supposed to open the meeting back up. Uh, two, it says governing body means the members of any public body which consists of two or more members uh, with the authority to make decisions or recommendations to a public body on policy or administration. We talked about that. We are the sole authority in Overton County on divisions of property less than five acres, but we also have the power to make recommendations to the county commission, especially when it comes to uh, adding or adding roads or closing roads on the road list. So we do have the power of recommendation as well. Three, it says mean, a meeting means the convening of a governing body of a public body for which a quorum is required in order to make a decision 
or to deliberate toward a decision on any matter. Meeting does not include any on-site inspections of any program. And it also says, nothing in this section shall be construed as to require a chance meeting of two or more members of a public body to be considered a public meeting. No such chance meetings, informal assemblages, or electronic communications shall be used to decide or deliberate public business in circumvention of the spirit or requirement of this part. So essentially what that means is, is that if Jim and Jimmy see each other at a restaurant out in town, or they have lunch together or something like that, that is not considered a meeting. However, according to the letter of the law, they are not supposed to discuss planning commission business outside the you know, convenience of a meeting. Now, either one, any of you can call me and talk with me about something that is on the agenda because I am not a voting member of the planning commission. However, you're not supposed to talk to each other outside of this body. I know that's difficult to do, but that's the letter of the laws. You're not supposed to do that. So number five, it talks about notice of public meetings. And there is new state statutes that govern this, but essentially, notice of regular meetings. Any such governmental body that holds a meeting previously scheduled by statute, ordinance, or resolution shall give adequate public notice of such meeting. So the new state law with regards to the uh, advertising of a public meeting is 48 hours now. It must be posted, the agenda must be posted, the supplemental items on the agenda, such as plats or any kind of documents, are supposed to be available at least 48 hours and they're supposed to be published. Um, but that does not mean that you can no longer have an other business section on your agenda. You can still have that. However, anything that is provided under other business also has to be made to the public, made available to them. So, for example, if somebody wanted to come in and present to us a subdivision plat tonight under other business, they can still do that. But if someone from the audience asks to see a copy of the plat by law, that person is supposed to provide them uh, with that plat. And it says notice of special meetings, and it says any such governmental body which holds a meeting not previously scheduled by statute, ordinance, or resolution, or for which notice is not already provided by law, shall give adequate public notice of such meetings. Um, I'm sure that we have something uh, in our policy that states how long a special call meeting has to be advertised, but that is different from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. And then it says planning commissions in Tennessee must comply with the Public Meetings Act. Essentially, this means that all meetings of a planning commission are open to the general public. That adequate notice of such meetings must be given and that minutes of those meetings must be taken and made available for public review. So we'll talk about that section right there for just a second. The meetings of our minutes are supposed to be kept in the clerk's office. Uh, available for public consumption. Uh, if they come in and ask for a copy, they are supposed to be able uh, to be provided that within reason. Um, and then I'll also state that all votes in the Planning Commission are public <coughs> votes. They are, you don't vote in secret. And so thus, if you'll ever notice in my minutes, if it's anything other than all either eyes or nays, we do a roll call vote and then we list the, the members and how they voted. Um, so all of that is public knowledge. Any questions about the Sunshine Law or the provisions there? Uh, On the adequate public notice. Yeah. Does it have to be in the newspaper? Can it, it does not. It can be. Now this is new. It used to have to be in the newspaper general circulation. Now, since the new state law passed July 1st, 2023, you can post to your website. And, uh, and I believe we do that here. We also post that on the, uh, <coughs> on the public bulletin board out there. So no, that is, that is with compliance. All right, second arm, let's talk conflict of interest in TCA section 124101 deals with the subject of conflict of interest. It is in the intent of this section to provide a public official from directly or indirectly benefiting from the action of a body of which he is a member, or she, I should say. The general provisions of this chapter state in part, and I'm not gonna read all of it, um, 
but essentially you've got those three things that they talk about, or the four things that they talk about. It says it shall not be lawful for any officer or other person whose duty it is to vote for, let out, overlook, or in any manner to superintend the work or any contract in which any municipal corporation, and it lists all these little subsections, created by statute shall or may interested to be directly interested in such a contract. And so a direct beneficiary uh, example of a conflict of interest is if, say, Jim being a loan officer or Nicole, if they were to be loaning the money for someone and they are dividing that property, that is a direct beneficiary. They're, they're financially gaining from that. And so in that instance, what you do you have that kind of conflict is you recuse yourself not only from the vote, vote but also from discussion uh, you know typically what they like to see you do is get out and go sit in the audience but you know as long as you recuse yourself and don't participate in discussion uh, and don't uh, vote when, when when you call it when it comes around to you and it's your turn to vote you just simply say upstate <clears throat> An indirect beneficiary is someone uh, who you might be closely related to, like a brother or a sister or mother or father or something like that, um, who you could potentially help out because of your position uh, on the planning commission. Now, it is almost impossible with a community of our size that somebody is not going to know somebody who brings something up. I mean, that's just that's, that's almost impossible. So in that instance, what you need to ask yourself is can you, you know, uh, fairly vote on something? Can you vote on this issue without being persuaded due to your relationship with the person prevented? If you can vote, you know, unbiased, then you can stay in. But if you don't feel you can, you need to conflict out. And I always say that if you think there might be a conflict, then there probably is one safe rather than sorry and just conflict out of it I mean I think Jim you've even you, you've had subdivision plats come in front of this board before when that happens it just steps back conflicts out no problem any questions about conflict of interest and just finally it just says it is often difficult to determine conflict of interest however ember any member of a planning commission who feels that he or she has a conflict of interest concerning any subject being discussed by the commission should inform the chair of such and refrain from voting on the matter. Please. <clears throat> Next is going to be ex parte contact. And so Black's Law Dictionary, Black's Law Dictionary defines ex parte as meaning one on, on one side only, by or for one party, done for, in behalf of, or on the application of one party only. Simply stated, a contact is ex parte in nature if all parties involved are not properly notified of the contact. And it says when faced with dealing with ex parte contact, members of the planning commission should refuse to be obligated to a particular side of any issue to a formal meeting of the commission. Uh, so I think back about our little Waterloo Road closure deal where we had two conflicting sides, you know, it was a pretty heated uh, argument. Ex parte would have been if we would have only catered to one side of that argument and kind of ignored the other. Again, you know, both parties need to have equal time. Uh, it insists that any and all information offered to an individual planning commissioner be withdrawn or presented to the whole commission. On-site reviews of a proposed project should be taken by the full commission or by a committee of commissioners, not by individuals. And it says written information concerning an upcoming action of the commission should be made available to all commission members. Any questions on ex parte contact? Finally, we will talk about due process. And this simply means everyone treated fairly. Everyone having the same opportunities as anyone else. And it says due process in each particular, in, in each particular situation means 
an exercise of the powers of government with adequate safeguards of the rights of individuals. The essential elements of due process are notice and the opportunity to be heard. The courts have noted time and again that fairness, not wisdom, is the key element in decision making by a local government. So one of the key aspects of due process was recently addressed by the Tennessee Code Annotated when they had the new uh, public hearing uh, law that was passed on uh, July 1st of 2023. Because before that day, citizen, citizens were allowed to attend meetings but did not necessarily have the right to speak. Um, all meetings were open to the public, but not all meetings were public hearings. So now, Tennessee Code has stated that any meeting of a public body, citizens have a right to address the commission if their item is on the particular agenda. So they couldn't just get up and you know, talk about whatever. It has to be an item that's on the agenda. And we go back to due process. Um, we'll go back to our Waterloo road closure. You know, both sides of that argument. If we were to say allow one side to have an hour to speak and only, and then the other side to only have ten minutes, that is not equal due process. You have to allow both parties to have the same amount of time to address the commission on an issue. Or if someone were to submit a, a subdivision plat and we turn it down for whatever reason, they have the right to resubmit that plat. They have the right to go through and have their plat seen uh, and we have the right to continue to turn it down, but they have the right to submit it as many times as they want to. Now, again, if they don't change something on that plat, it is subject to be turned down, but they have the right to submit it as many times as they want to. And according to the state law, each time they submit it, we're supposed to view it as a totally new submission. We're not supposed to like keep receipts in our head, you know, we're supposed to treat it, treat it as equal. So I'll just read a little bit of this. It says to ensure due process, planning commissions must take the following steps. Provide adequate notice of any public meeting or hearing. These notices should be easy to read and understand and should be placed so that any interested party will see them. And then it says number two, provide staff reports and other information gathered by the planning commission to the public well in advance of the hearing. So typically for our meetings, I send the, I send the agendas out at least, I try to do it at least six days in advance. We have a week deadline submission for this. So the deadline for this month's meeting was last Monday into business, and then I try to gather up all the information and send it out the next day. So everyone has the ability to do that. Once I send it to the mayor's office, they are supposed to publish the agenda that I send out so the public can take a look at it and see if there are any items of interest on the agenda for them. It says three, provide findings of fact to support the commission's decision. When it comes to subdivision plats, it's very simple. If a plat meets all of our requirements as laid out in the subdivision regulations without some massive safety concern, then we are supposed to approve those plats. Plat approval is not supposed to be you know, subjective. It's supposed to be according to the regulations. So again, providing finding of fact to support our decision. And then finally, avoiding the appearance of impropriety the commission's decision must be fair, impartial, and objective, unbiased by even the appearance of having been privately influenced. So that's due process. Again, making sure that everyone is treated fairly and that everyone has the same opportunity to go through the process here in the planning commission of plat subdivision or road closure. Uh, any questions on due process? Any questions on the train? Bring you over again. That'll do it. I've got a motion to adjourn. I'll make it. I got a question. I'll it fight. says. I got a question. It says the next meeting is March fourth. I'm assuming that's April the. That is April seventh. Mm -hmm. Whatever that. Or first. 
April the 1st. Monday. That was my April Fool's Day. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it'll be, uh, yeah, it'll be April 1st. Sorry about that. Thank you, Geraldine. We do have a motion from Nicole Lugner. I'll second. All in favor.